Hello, H1 here, and I'm uh, reacting to Top 25 Lost Episode Creepy Pastas. So, yeah. But uh, someone will be joining with me today is Luigi. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm pretty scared. Of course, you're scared. Okay. All right, now let's do it. Uh, how about let's not do it? It's uh, too late. It's too late already. Here's your warning. This video contains disturbing content, violent okay. content, jump scares, and sudden loud noises. Viewer discretion advised. Whoa. A lost uh. episode is a style of animation in an episode which is either witnessed by the production crew of the show or an individual who somehow came across it through whatever means. Wait, there's an apple. These episodes were lost due to being disturbing, creepy, okay. or flat out inappropriate for younger audiences. Some of the content was apparently shown on TV but was pulled off the air because of complaints or other reasons. So let's begin. The top 25 lost episode creepy pastas. Well, there, there it is. Yep. I, I'm pretty scared now. I'm scared. Come on. Whoa, what the heck? Don't scare me like that. Doug's oh. real life. Doug was an animated okay, I'm just sitcom gonna sit over that here. focused mainly on the early adolescent life of its title oh, okay. character, Douglas or Doug Funny, who experiences common predicaments while attending school in his new hometown of Bluffington. Doug narrates each story from his journal, and the show incorporates many imagination sequences. However, in the fall of 2005, after the show Doug had finished airing, it came back for just one week. The four mm -hmm. episodes were okay, but the fifth was completely different. It started with the intro animations of the line drawings, but the characters never appeared. The lines continued as normal, reacting as if the usual characters huh. were there. The <sighs> okay. It switched to show Doug in a dark a Nintendo room, Switch. It's coming out tomorrow. He wasn't narrating. Ah, that, that, that's like good. Usually yeah, that's, show. That, that's good. He just silently wrote for about a minute. The episode itself opened with Doug eating breakfast. He was giving a voiceover about how there was a big test that he had neglected to study for. His family was having a normal conversation. Hmm. And then the screen started to flash. The flashes seemed to be showing some sort of image or message, but it was impossible to decipher. Okay. Doug left his house and began walking to school. Mrs. Wingo announced that Doug had flunked Don't the test. Break and the entire contact. class started laughing Don't at him. Break. Hey. When Doug got to school, the screen flashed again. <sighs> it began to resemble a negative film. How come it didn't? How come it went dark? Hallway, I have no idea. Never been seen on the show before, but no one paid any That's attention weird. to him as Doug uh, walked yeah. to his desk. The scene then changed to the end of school and Doug was walking home. Pork chop turned into a hunk of rotting meat and Doug's house became decrepit. He sat down at an empty table. The phone rang and Doug's mom answered it. He instantly thought it was his teacher telling them all about how he flunked the test. Doug had a fantasy about his parents yelling at him for failing the test. They grew to giant sizes and their faces mm. became twisted and dark red. Doug was crying and apologizing. He went up to his bedroom, which was completely empty except for a book and a pencil. Doug picked up the book and started writing. And he narrated this time, but it was incredibly short. All he said was, I can't tell which one is real. What are you doing? Oh, I did ah! Who's a scaredy cat now? Italia, episode you see this. Italia is a short based right. anime with a lovable cast of the world's nations portrayed as humans, stereotypically based on their right. origins. One episode was featured on a bootleg DVD, uh, which is not sure uh, to be part can, of the original Can series. we, uh, 
start doing this she now. She starts off with the Axis power hmm. nations, Germany, Japan, and Italy, sitting on a tropical island. Obviously, we strength. could. Let's but just uh, take a break from this. Itself, but Germany and Japan seemed a little more. Okay. Okay, sorry guys, uh, Luigi's getting scared, so he's a big crybaby. He didn't call me. Yeah, whatever. Okay, alright, uh, alright. See you in the next scene. Uh, there we go. <laughs> Is he gonna wake up? Uh, where am I? Oh, not this room again. Wait, no, Louis. Oh, yeah, I forgot. I locked the door. Wait, how come I can't get out? Because I locked the door. Even there's a chair behind it. So, wait, you locked us out? Or locked us inside of... Whatever. Yes. <sighs> Fine. I guess I could watch you, I guess. Uh, this is gonna be very scary. Grim, obviously worried. After some banter between the two nations and unsub Japanese, it appears that the two had come to a horrifying agreement. The scene changes to that of night. It shows the three nations sleeping around the fire. In unison, Germany and Japan stand and carefully pick up the sleeping Italy, cautious of not waking him. They then take him to the water's edge and begin to drown him. Behind the muffled screams and whimpers, all that is heard is Japan repeating, Come in aside, Italia, or Sorry, Italy. While Germany is found looking away from the act, obviously choking back uh, tears. After the deed is done, what? they carry the scene uh, the door. of Italy back to the camp. Japan what? draws his sword and begins to fire. Some time passes. Germany and Japan take the cooked belongings out of the fire. And after a quick acknowledgement of their friend's sacrifice, they begin to eat the bloody morsels. Mm, okay, that was weird. Shortly after they begin their meal, well, you said there's no chair. And begins to go into a panic at the scene presented there, before there's no... him. Germany I don't know what I'm trying to say over here. Situation and explains to Italy that he uh, was the weakest. You lied to me. And with his sacrifice... Yeah. He was saving the lives of his friends. Germany then embraces Italy and comforts him as Japan finishes the procedure. More time passes. Japan and Germany are sitting around the lifeless body of Italy mm -hmm. and the remains of his organs placed beside him. Okay. In the final shot, the camera zooms in on Italy's face. His lifeless eyes are staring at the sky, smiling. As the screen fades to black. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Tom and Jerry, lost episode. It opens up with Tom and the owner at a typical house. But Tom's owner seemed even angrier than other Tom and Jerry episodes. The first scene shown in the episode shows the owner stomping on Tom's tail in a very realistic and painful way because Tom was sleeping by the basement door. The owner then starts yelling at Tom to never go down there. Tom, clearly terrified, runs away to another room. Jerry then comes out of a mouse hole and follows Tom into the next room. The next few minutes then show the regular Tom and Jerry routine, where Jerry tricks Tom into chasing him into the basement door a few times. But each time the owner catches Tom and flicks realistically painful injuries, which stays with Tom the even heck? after the scene ends. After this, uh. Tom starts to cry and moves to Jerry not to bother him anymore. You can tell what he's doing by his body language. Jerry just laughs at him and pushes him back to the basement door. The owner catches him again, but this time goes ballistic. Jerry seemed like he was finally taking pity on Tom. So Jerry picks up a knife and starts stabbing the owner in the leg quite graphically. Soon after, Tom opens the basement door and they carry the body down the stairs. Multiple other bodies were then seen down there, decaying and showing signs of their violent deaths. Tom and Jerry shook hands, 
But Jerry suddenly gets an evil look in his face. Mm. And Tom says in a ghastly, deep voice, Don't you believe in? Jerry stabs Tom, killing him instantly, and throws his corpse along with the other bodies. The last shot of the episode then shows Jerry putting up a for sale sign mm. on the yard of the I house. Do you see this? Laughing. What are you looking at? Planning to do it all over again. Uh, okay. Max and Ruby. Zero, 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 four. Max and Ruby is an animated series aimed at preschoolers. So this is what each Sonic's talking about. Of three self-contained mm. vignettes. Within each, Ruby is typically engaged in some sort of project or activity. While well, Max has a particular interest of his own, which either runs counter to Ruby or distracts her. One version was strangely different. In this video, a DVD box was found in someone's house. It was different than the normal Max and Ruby box art. This one had looked like it was crudely drawn in a black marker. On the back of the box, it listed four episodes, but they were not named correctly. The DVD itself was not scratched and looked in pristine condition. The episode selection screen was strangely isolated with just a white screen with black text. The titles of the episodes were called Max and Ruby 1, with the numbers being changed as it went down the list. From what the sources say, the only rememberable moment of the DVD was a disturbing static frame of Max and Ruby standing next to each other in complete darkness. They were drawn with no mouths, no noses, and their eyes were replaced with black, hollow holes. The colors were red, mm. and there was a faint I know what we keep on doing background. That. When viewing the DVD more closely, the episode before had now been replaced with Rest in Peace, Mommy and Daddy. While the episode itself goes static at this point, it's believed that in the episode, Max and Ruby's parents murder one another. A gravestone is faintly seen with the words, Rest in Peace, Mommy and Daddy, written on it. Loud voices are heard in the scene shows what looks like Max and Ruby hanging himself from the ceiling and Ruby walking in on him. In the final scene, it shows Ruby sitting near two gravestones, one with rest in peace, mom mm. and daddy, and another one saying, rest in peace, brother. She then looks at the camera, and the screen goes to a static image of Ruby, this time with a text saying, death is our only release. Uh, heck. Happy, 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 Nick Jr. early in the year of 1999. The star of the show was an apple named Happy Happy, who helped children when they got injured. The first two episodes were normal and went well. In Happy's Vacation, he goes on a vacation to the beach, heals injured kids, and even talks down on a bully into not hurting a child. Okay. The second episode, Hurt Happy, was about Happy's stick getting broken, and the children teamed up to help Happy Happy by giving him bandages and fruit. But as the episodes progressed, the show became weirder and weirder. A scene okay. in episode four, Nate needs help. Happy aids Nate, who has a bruise on his knee. He looked at the camera, giving off an evil smile and says, What does Nate need for his boo-boo? He continues to stare for 30 seconds. And then broke the silence by saying, That's right, a bandage. Happy Abby the was heck? made out of clay with arms, baby blue eyes, and large dark green lips being held up by a bent, rusty stick. 
as the show continued broadcasting on Nick Jr. every fortnight, the show became much more sinister. The rusty bent stick that was used became cleaner, and he began to develop a sinister stare with an evil grin. By episode okay. seven, he wasn't even what made the? out of clay anymore. As soon as the eighth episode aired, the show was suddenly taken off the air, along with all the recent episodes. Every trace of Happy Happy was removed, and not much is known about its existence. The TV show was planned to have three seasons, but they were never aired, possibly due to the sheer brutality and creepiness of the show altogether. Angry Sylvester. There was an episode back in 1998 which starred Sylvester from the Looney Tunes. Okay. This episode was reported as being strangely different and disturbing when compared to other previously aired episodes. <laughs> This particular episode did not have the same intro as the Looney Tune cartoons usually would. It just skipped the title screen and displayed a living room of a house which was drawn entirely in two colors. Red and black with no music. The only sound that could be heard during this part was a woman speaking in Hungarian saying, Directed by... The creepy thing about it is that Cartoon Network had not been broadcasted in Hungarian yet. There was no fade, but rather a jump cut straight to the next scene. It showed a bruised, eyeless Sylvester standing in front of him, something that appeared to resemble a military base. The scene was accompanied with dead silence. He didn't say anything. He just looked angry. In the next scene, he entered the military base, but no one was there. Sylvester wanted revenge on the people for what they did to him. His claws grew to a ridiculous size, covered in blood. He started to sabotage the military base by destroying all the lights hanging from the ceiling. The scene started flashing rapidly as he started tearing down the lights, and sparks of electricity could be heard, which sounded very loud. In the next scene, Sylvester was seen all alone in an empty room. The room's floor was blood red, and the walls looked as if it were on fire. The room contained two tables a large one with a toy and screwdriver on it, okay. and a small one with a TV. The beams coming out of the window were misaligned, so they resembled an inverted crucifix. But outside the window was pitch black. Sylvester proceeded to repair the toy Dalek when the TV suddenly turned on by itself. Okay. The TV displayed an extremely creepy cartoon with music that sounded like somebody randomly banging an electric guitar. A few seconds later, it switched to a long, empty room, with darkness on one end and Porky okay. Pig on the other. He started firing his gun at the other end of the room, saying things to the monster. Then the scene turned to static. A few seconds later, a very loud bang was heard and the screen faded to red. It then faded back to Sylvester in his room, standing next to the wreckage of his TV, looking even more angry, with more bruises, and his eyes were now tinged blood red. That creepy image of the horrifying, angry Sylvester stayed on the screen for Ooh, about ten crap. seconds, He's on drugs. then switched to black. After that, the normal Cartoon Network screen came back with the normal Fine, don't laugh at my next joke. screen. Luigi? He's asleep. The 
three stooges, dead dunderheads. In 1947, an episode, Halfwit's Holiday, was about to come to theaters. According to the police, only three or four individuals had arrived in the theater to watch a simple screening of oh, what no. they thought would be Halfwit's Holiday. Not my it was favorite later show. found out. Much more than that. The episode was wildly different than the standard Three Stooges episode. While the general foolishness and silly humor was present, it wasn't until blood was shown that the episode started feeling more disturbing. After a small incident where Mo trips over Larry's ladder, the two begin the usual fighting. But instead of the usual cartoonish sound effects and silly hand movements, Mo uses a screwdriver and rams it into Larry's eye. Larry is assumed dead at this point, since he isn't shown to be moving. Okay. The audio and video then cut out. But it is shown that Curly left tools all over the floor. He falls on one of them and accidentally grabs a saw on the way down, injuring himself. The video blacks out again, and this time there is a dispute between Mo and Curly. The two get into a fight, which eventually leads to Curly killing Mo on stage with a hammer. But it keeps on happening. Curly is critically injured by Mo's last attempt for revenge, but quickly uh, passes out on? on camera. Uh. The police of the theater eventually told its audience to leave and removed the film from the screening room. Upon further investigation, it was believed the original producer of the video was kidnapped, and an alternate, snuff version of the film was created instead. Wait, was this in a TV show or a real stars. life from a long time ago? What are... What was he talking about? Teletubbies. Seesaw. An uncut, possibly uh, snuff version <clears throat> of the Teletubby show the, the, the other one, was recorded uh, on VHS was, uh, the three back in 1995. Why? The tape mm. was labeled Seesaw but there will be a parody and of it. featured the Teletubbies running down a hill Later. to a static image of a seesaw. The image was shown for several minutes before a woman's voice could be heard telling okay. the audience she was coming to get them. A bear's face flashed what? on the screen, and it opened its mouth, saying that it, too, was coming to get them. The it seesaw too. was seen again, it... but this time, mm. with gore around it. The only known seesaw episode the Teletubbies were featured in was episode 11 of season 1. Okay. It was apparently the first ever episode to feature the bear. The bear. This caused several parents to complain about the sketch being too scary for their children. Arthur, Death of Grandma. Arthur is an animated educational television series for children. Okay. With its first episode back in 1996. Arthur often deals with important issues that families face. Yeah, can I go dyslexia, get something from your tiny fridge? Uh, okay. In this last episode, unlike normal episodes, it does not show <clears throat> the opening title of the episode. It shows Arthur and his father sitting in a waiting room of Elwood City Hospital. Arthur's mother... Except... The heck? When the casket was open, it wasn't his grandma, <sighs> his actual mother... Arthur begun screaming aloud, and sudden flashes of himself being in the casket formed in the scene. The next scene showed a basic title called Covery, and was written on a plain white background. Arthur appeared in a room, and when his pet pal came in and started barking, Arthur kicked him and slammed the door shut. The next scene showed Arthur sneaking off to visit his grandma's grave. He dug through the earth and found the coffin and then opened what was inside of it. The screen went black and there was a low sound that rose high above the chatter, which was uh, Tibbles laughing. 
The final scene showed Arthur sitting at the sugar bowl with a corpse of Buster at the floor. There were a few white flashes and it showed him in prison with Arthur screaming that he murdered them all. Kate, D.W., his dog. But not his parents. For it seemed that Thura had made him. Hmm. The Simpsons, Dead Bart. The episode started off like any other episode, but it had very poor quality animation. The first act was fairly normal, but the way the characters acted just did seem a little off. Homer certainly seemed a lot angrier. Marge seemed very depressed. Lisa seemed oddly anxious. And Bart seemed to have a genuine anger and hatred for his parents. The Simpson family then went on a plane near the end of the first act. The plane was taking off, and as you guessed it, Bart was fooling around. For a split second, Bart breaks a window on the plane and gets sucked out. With the camera zooming in on Bart's corpse. When act two started, Homer, Marge, and Lisa were sitting around their table crying. The crying went on for several minutes. A message saying one year later comes across the screen and it shows Homer, Marge, and Lisa skeletally thin and still sitting at the same table. For some reason, Maggie was not present. In the next scene, they visit Bart's grave Springfield was completely deserted, and as they walked to the cemetery, the houses became more and more decrepit. The view zoomed out as the episode came to a close. The tombstones in the background had the name of every Simpsons guest star on them. <clears throat> they even had the correct dates of death when some of the crew members would die. regular show. I can fix this. This lost episode is more of an uncut version of the original, but nonetheless, it's much more gory and intense. The creator show, J.G. Quintel, okay. invited his friends over to watch the screening of the new episode, I Can Fix This. Everything played out normal until it got out to the freezer scene where the protagonist, Mordecai and Rigby, get locked inside the park freezer. Mordecai blamed Rigby for the situation and started attacking him. The duo ended up in a scuffle, and in one scene, it showed Mordecai strangling Rigby in a realistic fashion. What's more, for a cartoon, blood was shown in the scene, and in another, Mordecai was gaining satisfaction in torturing Rigby. The episode ends when Mordecai kills Rigby and simply smiles to himself. Ah, okay. Real Monsters. Final Scare. Ah, Real Monsters is an American animated television series about adolescent monsters in training. It was developed for Nickelodeon and featured three monsters, Ickes, Obelina, and Crumb, who hmm? attended an institute for monsters under a city dump and learned to frighten humans. An article explained how one version of the show was filmed on a VHS tape. The person had found it at a yard sale. This episode featured a more gruesome and darker story than the original episodes. Inside the Monster Academy, the grumble was seen telling Ickes, Obelina, and Crumb, and Zimbo that tonight, the four of them would team up and perform one final scare. In the next scene, Krum was thrown under a bus by Obelina, where he is killed instantly. Ickes crept up behind a mime okay. and dug his claws into a man's skull. The mime fell backwards onto Ickes, killing him. Zimbo chokes a woman to death, but is stuck inside her throat, and a young boy begins beating himself on the sidewalk. The scene then changes back to the Monster Academy, where the grumble starts congratulating Obelina on her success by killing the humans and tricking the others to suicide, while stating it was the best scare he's seen in decades. 
Then, the episode ends. <clears throat> Suicide Mouse. Avi. Honestly, uh, nothing no, is more disturbing, no. messed up, and oh, look, creepy he, than this look, lost episode who's, who's based on the popular now. Disney character Mickey Mouse. Now I we have this. covered this one a number of times on our uh, top twenty-two non-gaming creepy pastas and in other places, but we'll explain it once more because it's just that interesting. Hey, guess what? I can Suicide see the future. Mouse starts off with uh, Mickey walking from left to right down a repeating street. No! 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 Everyone, look away! Look away, guys! Look away! Oh, uh, why? It's a cursed video on YouTube. Huh? How is it cursed? I wa I watched it. I thought it was just a thingy. But now I, n when I look at the top 10 cursed videos, yeah. I just realized I just watched the cursed video. I think it's still following us. Okay. Yeah. Is it, is it over? Yes, yeah, stop being such a scaredy monkey. Stick Stickly is a fictional character created by Nickelodeon. Uh, did you mean scaredy cat? Stick with googly eyes, whatever. Jelly bean nose, and a small mouth. He was the host of Nick in the Afternoon, a programming block on the network. Uh, aired summers from 1995 okay. to 1998 on weekday afternoons. There were six videos on the Stick Stickly website called First Ever Stick Stickly Appearance. The first began with Stickly in front of a chalkboard. He had no nose and his mouth was straight. He proceeded to make a few jokes and the episode ended. The second was... <sighs> Wait, why did the video stop? I don't know. Watch this in the second part. Wait, who said that? Uh, I don't know. Huh. Okay. Well, I guess we'll...